Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Your Christianity will never be exciting to you until you learn to have this close communication with God. And I'm just going to throw this out. You can be as close to God as you want to be. It all depends on how much time you're willing to put into it. All right, I'm going to talk to you today about divine guidance or hearing God's voice. So I can't talk about my relationship without, uh, with God without saying, and God told me, and God said, and you know. No, that doesn't mean I'm hearing audible voices all the time, but that's, that's the promise of the New Testament that we will have the Holy Spirit in us. Amen. Jesus said, you're better off if I go away. I've been with you, but now I'm going to be in you through the Holy Spirit. And in John 16, it says, I'm giving him to you so you can be in close fellowship with him. We're supposed to have, believe it or not, a conversational relationship with God. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to sit and have a conversation with God like you would somebody over a cup of coffee. That's why you have to learn how God speaks. But we need to learn that God is not just interested in our 45-minute trip to church on Sunday morning. He wants into our whole life every day, everything. I just double dare you to invite God to mess in any area of your life that he wants to. <laughs> Come on, somebody's agreeing. I'll go talk to you. God, I invite you to get involved in any area of my life that you want to, bust down those doors that I've kept closed to you. I give you access to my thoughts, my finances, my friends, my entertainment, how I dress. I want you to deal with everything in me that needs to be dealt with so I can become more and more like you. Anybody? And can I tell you something, and I honestly believe this. I believe when you hear preaching like this, I think it excites your spirit. You can almost see it. It's like, because even though part of you, maybe your flesh doesn't want to do it or is afraid of what might happen, spiritually you know that it's right, and you, and you get excited because that's what we're created for, for Christ-likeness, to grow and to become more and more and more like him all the time. Awesome. I like this message. So, if you're going to hear from God, the first thing you need to do is believe that you can hear from God. So, probably not in here, you wouldn't experience this, but if you're watching by television and you've been, this is something new if you're hearing from God. I mean, you know, I went to a church for a long time and I never, never heard from God. Or if I did, I didn't know what I was hearing. I didn't. I didn't really know. I wasn't, I wasn't taught that. Matter of fact, it almost comes across like it's dangerous for people to think that they're hearing from God. One woman said, why is it that if we talk to God, it's prayer, and if he talks to us, we're psychotic? <laughs> you go around telling people that God talks to you and they're ready to lock you up. But I don't understand that because all through the Bible, God said, God said, God said. I mean, he talked to Moses, to Joseph, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. You say, yeah, but now after the resurrection, aren't things different now? Well, he talked to Saul, who was later named Paul after the resurrection and got him straightened out. You can't, you can't read the book of Acts without knowing that these people were in communication with God in a variety of ways. And I'm going to tell you something. Your Christianity 
is never going to be exciting to you until you learn how to hear from God <clears throat> and be led and guided by his voice in your life. I'm going to say it again. Your Christianity will never be exciting to you until you learn to have this close communication with God. And I'm just going to throw this out. You can be as close to God as you want to be. It all depends on how much time you're willing to put into it. Mm, time. You can't have a good relationship with anybody without time. Not your kids, not the person you're married to, not friends. I mean, relationships are built on time and through being involved in each other's lives. So, this meeting that I was in, I talking about, you know, God told me this, and I felt like God said this, and, and uh, the man in charge got up right behind me and basically corrected me, which that was fun. And, uh, but then it was very thrilling to me because the next speaker that got up was somebody who was a little more accepted and respected in those circles, and he taught a message called the Whispers of God. And everybody loved it. It's the same thing. It's just, I don't, I don't know why people get all wigged out if you say God told you something or he, or he showed you something or he put something in your heart. I think there's ways that we can say it and ways that we don't need to say it, especially if you're around people that don't get it. I wouldn't be saying all the time, God told me this, God told me that, God said this, God said that. I mean, I've kind of learned to adapt the language I believe God put in my heart. You know, or I feel like God's leading me to, because you really can drive a lot of people off using some kind of super spiritual language that they don't understand. It's just going to make them think you're a nutcase. <laughs> Everybody say, I hear, I hear from God. Because you're never going to hear from God until you believe that you can. So you need to stop even saying, I'm afraid I'm not hearing from God, or I don't think God talks to me. God talks to you. You may have not figured out it's God yet, <laughs> but he talks to you. I believe God's talking to you right now. I mean, what's the point in me being here if I don't believe that God is speaking to you through me? You sure, I mean... You sure don't need to hear from me. You need to hear from God. And so really, every time you come to church, you need to come with the attitude that God is going to speak to me today. God's going to say something to me today. And I'm, I'm not going to miss it. And I'm going to do whatever he says. That'll change things. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing comes by the preaching of the word of God concerning Christ. Now, because of that love for God and his word, that was when I started feeling like that God was saying things to me. And it was, man, it was exciting because it was new for me. And the thing was that a lot of it, I'd say most of it was Simple, everyday, practical things involved in my everyday life. I remember, matter of fact, it was actually the day that God touched me. I bowled on Friday nights and in a league, and I was bowling so bad that night, and I, I felt the Lord say, well, why don't you just ask me to help you? And I thought, well, you don't ask God to help you bowl. I mean, that wasn't the kind of things you bothered God with. I mean, this is God. You only take the emergencies to him. <laughs> but see, that's our problem. He wants to be involved in everything that you're involved in. Everything. That's how you have this relationship and this fellowship and, 
You know, it's like, you can't hide anything from God anyway. He already knows everything you're going to do before you do it. And you should ask him to help you with anything that you're having an issue with. I met a woman in a store and she was working there and I found out she was a Christian and, and so I got curious about how they're paid. I said, do you get a salary You're on commission? How does this work here? And she said, well, we are actually on salary, but we, um, we have to meet a quota. And if we don't meet that quota, then we could lose our jobs. And she said, things have been kind of slow for me lately. And I said, well, why don't you just pray that God will give you favor and he'll send the customers to you? And she said, well, would it, would it be right <laughs> to ask God to help me with something like that? Now, she'd been a Christian 27 years, and she didn't know that she could ask God to give her favor and send customers her way. You're not trying to take something away from somebody else. I mean, they could pray the same prayer. But if they don't know how to, that doesn't mean that you got to sit around and have nothing. <laughs> Come on, you start asking God for favor and see what happens. I mean, I love it. I trust God for favor, and I see some of the most, the funniest, the most amusing. It, it's like a little wink from God. Come on, you have not because you ask not. You start asking. Well, what if I ask for the wrong thing? Well, you won't get it. <laughs> anyway, so I asked God, okay, Lord, I ask you to help me bowl. And man, I started throwing strikes and spares, and it was just like, wow, you know. I, I remember getting so excited back then about hearing from God. And then, I, you know, I would have these things where, oh, God, I need to hear from you. I, I need a word from you, God. And then I would, you know how we do? And then I'd dive at my Bible. And... <laughs> and then I'd run to Dave. Oh, you're not going to believe it. I asked God this, and this is, this is what he showed me. Well, you know, that was exciting until I started getting stuff like, oh, you wicked sinner, woe be unto you. I mean, you know you've kind of gone too far when you've got to take 12 tries at trying to find something. That you... <laughs> Come on, are you home out there? <laughs> 12 tries trying to find something that you actually would like to have. Well, why, why is that? Well, when you're a baby Christian and God's trying to prove himself to you, he'll do some outrageous things. But I said last night, and I'll say it again today, the longer you walk with God, the less of that kind of stuff you're going to get. You know why? Because God expects us to grow up and mature and to, listen, to know his heart and just not to have to be told everything to do and not to do because as you get to know him, no wonder the apostle Paul said, for my determined purpose is to know him. To know him. That needs to be our number one purpose, to know him to know the character of God, to know what we can expect from him, to learn when he's speaking to us or how he's leading us and how he's guiding us. So I don't, I don't use that one much anymore because it always just <laughs> is a waste of time anyway. <laughs> Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you and even show you great and mighty things, things which have been confined and hidden which you do not know and understand and cannot distinguish. Now, as I said, God spoke to people all over the Bible. So to act like it's not something he does, I just doesn't make any sense to me at all. A great man of God was asked, matter of fact, it was Dallas Willard, how he learned to hear from God. And he said, through making a lot of mistakes. So here's the thing, hearing from God is a learning process. And if you're ever going to learn to have the kind of communication with the Lord that I'm talking to you about right now, 
Number one, you have to realize you're not always going to be right. But when you're not right, don't let it frighten you to think, well, you know, I'm just going to get myself in trouble if I keep that up. The longer you work with God and the more you get to know him, the more you'll be able to discern if what you think you're hearing is actually right. And the more you know the word of God, especially, the more you can judge what you think you're hearing or feeling by the word. And I don't care what you think God is saying, if it doesn't line up with the word, then it's not God. Okay? Trust God to speak to you more than you trust yourself to hear from him. And a couple of you got that. But that was, that was something that really helped me because I used to try to hear from God and try to hear from God and try to hear from God. And you know, when you get into one of those modes, you just get yourself so confused and actually it's an opportunity for the devil to take advantage of you and try to deceive you. And so the Lord just put on my heart, he said, instead of trusting yourself to hear from me, Trust me to speak to you. Because you see, when God speaks, he has his ways of making sure that you know that it's him. So some of you can take a lot of pressure off yourself right now and say, instead of this trying to hear from God, when I need to know something, God, I'm going to ask you and I'm going to expect you and even thank you on a daily basis that you are speaking to me at just the right time, in just the right way, and you will make sure that I'm not confused and that I know what you're really saying. <laughs> Don't have a preconceived idea of how God will speak. Because <laughs> he'll surprise you just as soon as you think you've got to figure it out one way. <laughs> He's going to do something different. Have a heart that's ready to obey whatever God might say. You can't hear from God if you're going to have selective hearing. That means I don't like that, so that's not God. Well, I like this one, so that is God. Amen? If God isn't speaking to you, it might be a good idea to ask you if you did the last thing he told you to do. Come on, right now, I'm just making some comments, things I've learned over the years. This afternoon, we're going to get into some more of the specifics of how God speaks and how you can hear. But all of these things are important. For example, are you trying to hear from God about something really important in your life, but you're mad at somebody? You're not going to hear like that because you've got to hear from the inside. And if your soul's all blocked up with bitterness and resentment, anger and strife and unforgiveness, you're not going to hear, you're not going to hear God. If there's anything that the church needs to do, it needs to get over being mad at somebody all the time. Come on. Who are you mad at? Amen. I didn't hear all that, but it sounded good. <laughs> you know, I like to be able to think for a moment in the morning and be able to say to God, as far as I know, God, I'm not angry at anybody. I don't have any strife in my heart. I don't have any unforgiveness. I think we need to be able to start every day like that. Because if you expect to have that kind of fellowship with God, those are things that you just can't have in your heart. Everybody understand me, okay? And I, I would imagine that there's probably more people in here today and certainly more watching by TV that there is somebody in your life that you need to forgive. There's probably more people like that in here than those who can say, I'm not mad at anybody. Hmm, there's that quiet thing again. Okay, 
How can I know what God's will is for my life? Well, that's the big one, isn't it? What does God want me to do? The only way you're gonna find out is to step out and try stuff. It's so easy to find out what God wants you to do with your life. And people fret over that, and they, they sweat over that. They just, John Osteen, great man of God that's gone home to be with the Lord. Um, a missionary went to him one time and said, I'm so confused, I don't know what to do. I know I'm called to the mission field, but I don't know whether to go to Mexico. I don't know whether to go to India. I don't know whether to go to Africa. And he just had himself in a dither because he didn't know what to do. And John said, well, do something, brother, lest you do nothing. <laughs> you know, a lot of times we get ourselves so confused about what it is we think we're supposed to do that we don't, we don't end up doing anything except being confused. You know, first of all, God's not gonna give you something to do that you hate. Now, he may give you something to do that you'd prefer not to do, but your gifting is gonna fit whatever it is that God gives you to do. He, he doesn't delight in setting people up for failure. And so, when, when I felt like God put a call on my life, I obviously wasn't gonna go from making that bed I was making when God spoke to me to having a worldwide ministry, and I didn't know what to do. And so I started just any opportunity at my church, I'd take it. Well, it, it took about two weeks for me and the kids to know I wasn't called to nursery work. <laughs> we all knew it. That was not my gift. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not called to the helps ministry. I have a gift for getting you to help me. I do, I can motivate people. I can, I can get them on board and get them to, to help me with stuff. But, you know, if, if you spill something in the front row, I'm not gonna be the one that's probably gonna jump down there and clean it up. <laughs> but I might say, I'm good, I'm good at that part. I can get it done. Hey, let me tell you something. There's nothing wrong with knowing yourself. Come on, you need to know yourself and stop trying to fit yourself into somebody else's box. You're not gonna be somebody else, you gotta be you. And you know, we all have different gifts because we're all needed, we're all part of a body that's supposed to function together. But we can't be jealous of each other and resentful and envious and competing and in competition. You gotta find out what you're supposed to do and then get about doing it. I tried street evangelism because our church was really big into passing out tracts on the street. And I would go down, Dave and I and our kids, Saturday morning in St. Louis in the winter, passing out tracts, and people would cuss you and slap them out of your hands. You know what? I did not like it. <laughs> and then, you know, you go through all the stuff the devil has you go through. Well, you know, you're just, you don't care about these people that are going to hell. You don't, you know, you're not willing to be embarrassed. You, you know, you should talk to anybody. You know what? That's not my gift. I mean, I've been with people that could get on the elevator with somebody and have them saved by the time they get to their floor. <laughs> but they do well if I speak to them because that's just, that's not me. And that's okay. You don't have to be what somebody else is. You know what a relief that could be if you would believe me today? Well, aren't I supposed to witness? Yes, you're supposed to witness. But everybody, God uses everybody in different ways. That's why I tell people a lot, witness all the time, but use words only when necessary. In other words, show the love of Christ to people, and then they can't deny what God's wanting to do in your life. Well, God wants to guide you through every day of your life. I suggest that you begin by believing that you can hear from God and also be willing to do what He says for you to do. How to hear from God is something that we all have to learn, and we learn it through study, and we also learn it through experience.
eh, lo hacía escondida de todo, pero yo con 13 años lo pillé. También escuchaba cómo a veces él le pegaba. Entonces, eh, si bien mi mamá siempre trató de mantener la familia como en secreto, esas cosas. Que no, que era fea, que no, que nadie me pescaba. Que no había esperanza en mí. Que mis manos eran feas, mi cara. Me miraba al espejo y lloraba. Dos veces traté de ahorcarme. Well, at Hand of Hope, the outreach arm of Joyce Meyer Ministries, we are honored to work alongside Teen Challenge to help people break the chains of addiction and to see all that God has created them to be. Patricia and Norbert, would you begin by telling us about the need for a home like this here in Chile? Mm -hmm. Well, we have uh, the situation with uh, the women growing up in atmospheres where men abuse them. And through that abuse, women are turning to drugs like never before. The men beat them up, they turn them into slaves, they make them do the drug runs. And so they are afraid to, st to step out. They are afraid to go back to their families. It's a nine to 12 month program. We have a curriculum that gives them step by step discipleship in which they can grow in Christ. Once they're mature enough, they are reunited with their children. And when they live that dream of being free from drugs and being free from those things that cause them to turn to drugs, then they can be the mother that they need to be. Jimena, you are such an important part of all of these women's stories because of the way that you play a huge role in their healing. What are some of the particular troubles that women are dealing with? La necesidad de amor, del abrazo familiar, del abrazo de alguien que te ama, lo que buscan, lo que necesitan, lo que transforma. Porque mis manos eh, son instrumentos de Dios. Y esta es mi familia. Ellas son mis hijas. Cuando supe que Él me perdonó, a pesar de que le hacía daño también a la gente al vender droga, eso me, me sentí súper porque alguien me amaba así como yo era. You said before that you couldn't even stand to look in a mirror because of how ugly you felt. What do you see now? When I'm working, many people come to me and say, oh, your smile, you have something special. I said, it's special. And one time I stopped and looked at the mirror, but I looked at my eyes. And he said, I did this. It was my face. What an amazing privilege to see the way that these women are blooming. The way that the beauty that God has put in them is now coming out so that they can see it. And when you help a woman, it flows over into her children, into her families, and it changes so many lives. That is what Project Girl is all about, sharing the beauty and you can do that with us right here in Chile as we've been talking about and in many, many places all over the world. the Word of God teaches us that if we are willing to share what we have, God can multiply that and make it into a lot more than what we started with. So please share. Help ons om andere mensen te kunnen helpen. Bel ons 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meijer.nl slash partner. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt.
Samen veranderen we de wereld. Well, we're all getting older every day, but you know what? Age is just a number. Getting old is a mindset. I wish that someone would have told me when I was 20 or 30 the things that I'm trying to tell you in this book. I share with you some things that I've gone through personally and the things that I believe I could have done that would have helped me to avoid some of those more painful things. Let me help you age without getting old. Besluit om bewust te genieten van je leeftijd en ontdek wat je vandaag kunt doen om je morgen jong te voelen. Bestel dit boek door te bellen met 026 20 22 100 of online via joyce-meyer.nl shop. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meyer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard.